Um, first of all, thank you to everybody that's joining us for the webinar this morning around uh, the professional mortgage. Um, there are some chat messages already coming through. So um, if anybody does want to talk in the chat throughout the webinar, feel free to do so. If we can answer your questions as we go along, we will. If not, we will answer them after the event. So no worries, we will answer one way or the other. Um, to introduce you to the presenters today and the hosts, we have Andrea Roberts and James Enos, who are the National Account Managers for Hodge. Um, some of you may know those already. We also have Ellie Gibbs, who is one of the senior underwriters at Hodge, and we'll be giving you the underwriter's uh, perspective later on in the webinar. And last, but by no means least, we have Sarah Grace and Courtney Flockhart. Sarah is Managing Director for Sarah Grace Mortgages. Um, they specialise in dentists, self-employed dentists, small business um, owners and corporate executives. In terms of professional, I think dentists would be the focus, but Sarah can tell you more about that later on. Um, she also has specialisms for people with less than two years accounts or in general, as most professionals are, are short on time. So that's where Sarah kicks in. And then we have Courtney Flockhart from Henry Donnell. Um, Henry Donnell share a lot of things with Hodge. Trustworthy, honesty, integrity, loyalty and reliability are things that they pride themselves on. Courtney is an advisor there and in terms of the professional mortgage, she uh, specialises in legal professionals and barristers. Um, again, you know, any kind of questions around that, I'm sure Courtney will be more than happy to help. So I'm going to hand you over to James now for the interesting stuff, and he's going to start the webinar. And as I say, drop into the chat anytime with any questions you've got. I hope everybody enjoys and finds it useful. Thanks, Beth. And good morning, everyone. It's great to have you all uh, attend our first Hodge webinar of the year. So as Beth has already alluded to, uh, today's session focuses on the professional mortgage market. This is a key specialist market uh, that Hodge has recently launched a new proposition in. Um, and the session today is really going to include, first of all, a short presentation from myself and Andrea talking about the uh, importance of the specialist markets and our approach when delivering our professional proposition and how we can support clients. Then uh, we're honoured to have with us today, uh, as Beth already said, Sarah and Courtney, both uh, leading mortgage advisors within their specialist professional markets, who are going to give a broker's perspective on, I suppose, what uh, the complexities are within that space and how um, a lender really needs to approach that and approach the support in being able to help those clients and their complex needs. And also we've got a Q&A with Ellie Gibbs, our senior underwriter. Ellie is um, extremely well-versed in complex income underwriting. She really does know her stuff and understands the bigger picture when it comes to um, and looking at a case and, and clients' needs and the current circumstances and being able to provide them with the best solution possible. So yeah, some uh, really meaty uh, information should come across. Hope you're going to enjoy it. And what I'm going to do now is um, hand over to Andrea to set the scene and start the agenda. Thanks, James. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So yeah, so James and I are going to talk you through, take you through this short presentation. But first of all, I'm sure you'll all agree that 20 um, that the last couple of years have been really, really busy. So 2023 is all about the year of education. It's all about really taking stock and looking at different markets and different opportunities that may be available. So we're going to take time just to, to have a look at the, the specialist market. Then, I'm, then we're going to talk to you um, or describe to you about how we use use a collaborative of, approach to all our um, projects, particularly our professionals working with you to find a way forward for your clients. Then we're going to take a quick look at the sort of cases and professions that we've seen so far and then get into the real nitty gritty um, and some of the standout criteria of the professionals that we serve. Thanks, Andrea. So first of all, so Year of the Specialist 2023, what we've done here is really pulled out some stats to help you understand how important specialist lending is in today's market. So the market has evolved uh, significantly over the last 10 years. What we've seen is now over 50 percent of applicants now falling outside of the mainstream mortgage criteria. So 
a real shift in clients' needs and in client situations. And lenders have had to, across the market, uh, flex their understanding and flex their criteria to be able to support those needs. We all know that mortgage brokers play a huge part within today's market. And we're looking at about 84% now of all mortgages go through mortgage brokers. To put that in perspective, it was 50% or circa 50% back in 2010, a huge shift. And that's only set now to continue to grow um, up to 90% is forecast in 2024. So a real shift and a real change and importance for you as brokers to understand which lenders can support which of your clients' needs. Again, we're seeing more applica applicants get rejected by the high street, which are falling then uh, towards the specialist market lenders to be able to assess them and be able to support in a different way. And Hodge itself has seen a real shift since the pandemic and before that with self-employed clients. We're seeing more self-employed clients now coming to Hodge to look for and to support their solutions and sort of their uh, situations. Massive year for um, remortgages. We all know it's going to be a record year for that. And many of those clients are going to be coming out of their, their previous deals and their circumstances could be completely different to what uh, they were when they first applied for the mortgage. You know, we've had a pandemic since. Many of those maybe have taken that mortgage before. And, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, pressures really on clients and their situation. And we've obviously got a very different rate market than what was there prior to the pandemic. So lots of reasons why specialism is a really important part of this year and beyond. So it's really, really um, important for us to, to talk about um, the way we have developed the product um, through working um, with some, some key brokers and moving forward now working closely with every single broker that submits an application to us. So it is very much the collaborative approach. So um, right the way from inception, from product development um, through to finding a solution um, for your um, for for your clients, we've actually we we've really really keen to work really closely with you and build those really important relationships, so we can really understand you, your markets and your clients. Now, of course, we appreciate that there are other professional mortgages on the market. Um, but when we started out on this journey, we actually really wanted to, um, to make a difference. And we wanted to get into the niche within the niche. So in order to do that, we work really, really closely with um, a couple of key brokers um, to really understand some areas, what other lenders did um, did out there and really where they found it difficult to, to find a solution for their clients. We also have worked really, really hard um, over the past 18 months to absolutely understand these professionals. So we, we get their career progression right from the beginning, from um, from. At, um, th all the way through through training, um, through to retirement and beyond. Um, and that's really, really important. So our underwriters, our ring fence specialist underwriters, and we'll hear from Ellie a little bit later on, is absolutely um has has taken time to really educate ourselves um, along with our BDMs as well. And of course, here at Hodge, we are very, very much a service-led lender. We really pride ourselves um, on the service that, um, that, that we provide you. So it is very much all the way through a collaborative approach. Thanks, Andrea. So we're just going to give you a brief overview of what we found out and what we've seen since we piloted this product uh, with those key firms who deal with professionals on a day-to-day -day basis. And I suppose none of this is probably much of a surprise to you when you think about professionals. Um, we started off with this product really looking at maybe those newly qualified and those second moving uh, type um, inquiries we get from the professional market. And what we found is actually the average professional is probably a little bit older than we first thought, around 33. Average loan size are much larger within this sector. And we're seeing that the average term actually is starting to increase as with the cost of living, as you can expect, people are looking to spread that cost over a longer period, which is no different to many of the clients within the standard mortgage market. Self-employed income plays a real part in that. And I think this is where we really stand out as a lender and being able to look at 
the complexities around that. Maybe not your standard uh, self-employed uh, two years account average, etc. But understanding when those can be slightly different to that and how we can uh, get gain confidence with the unique situations. Purchases have really led the way. And again, as a lender coming into this space with a criterion service-led proposition, we understand that some of these clients may fall into that mainstream market after that initial purchase. What we do look to do is try and be there as a lender, be different from the starting point and help them achieve what they're looking for, potentially from an affordability basis or because of their unique circumstances. The geographical split will be no surprise as well. Obviously, it's quite a, a strong uh, a strong number of professionals from the London market. And the average LTV is a lot lower than we thought, actually. Uh, we do lend up to 90% on this product, but 77% has been the average since we started uh, on our journey into professional mortgages. So, Andrea, do you want to give a high-level uh, overview of the highlights to the product? Yeah, absolutely. But first of all, let me tell you about the professionals that we serve. So, it's medical doctors, it's dentists, pharmacists, optometrists, um, vets, accountants, solicitors, barristers, chartered surveyors and chartered engineers. So as you can see, it's quite a long, extensive list of professionals. But one of the standout things for us is, though, if it is a joint application, so for example, um, you may have a medical doctor who may um, have a joint application inquiry um, and the joint is a nurse, for example, that sits outside the professional occupation, um, we will actually take 100% of both of those incomes. So it's 100% of the professional and the non-professional. So when I say 100% of incomes, we actually um, will look at multiple income sources. So it could be that your doctor, for example, has a mix of self-employed and employed income. It could be that they um, have, are employed with the NHS, but then also do some private work and may have set themselves up as a limited company. We will actually look at 100% of both those incomes. And if your professional, for example, um, receives bonuses, again, we can look at taking all of the bonuses. So with regards to affordability, so of course at the moment with lenders' affordability calculators being squeezed, it's really, really important that we can provide the maximum support for your clients. So at 80%, we can actually look to do six times income and at 90% is five times income. But remember, it's not just the professional um, that we can do the higher loan to income for, um, multiple income for, sorry, is actually both the non-professional and the joint. So we do actually have a minimum income um, for the, the project. So for a single application, it's 30,000 and for a joint, it's 50,000. However, this really does highlight how, how we have learned and how we have changed. So when we launched um, the product um, on the pilot, we actually um, launched it with a minimum income of £35,000. But quickly, um, from working collaboratively with a number of brokers, it became clear that that £35,000 was, was really too high to, to capture, I suppose, the newly qualified cohort. So we reduced that down quickly to 30000 Now, the professional product does serve your applicants from age 21 all the way up to 50. So unlike some other um, products on the market, it's not just newly qualified. So it doesn't matter if your applicant qualified last month, um, last week or 10 years ago, it really doesn't matter. Um, so on application, it's age 21 to 50. But it doesn't matter if your applicant is um, is older than 50 because we actually do cater for our more mature clients um, on our 50 plus projects. So we can look at them then um, into retirement on and beyond. So in essence, we can look after your clients from age 21 all the way up to 94 and further. 
Fantastic. Thanks, uh, Andrea. So we're going to quickly drill down just into some of the key occupations that uh, we've got close to and understand through the pilot. Um, we see regular inquiries from doctors. Again, it can be quite complex when it comes to the income. You'll see a maybe a NHS um, payslip from a doctor and they can have multiple different payment structures within that. It's not just your standard uh, salary for the month and a bit of pension and maybe some other you know, smaller increments. Our underwriters really do understand that and they understand what ones are regular payments, what is viable, and they can look to include as many of those um, from an employed and any other income from a self-employed uh, into the affordability calculator to get the maximum amount of borrowing affordability which is realistic to that client circumstances if you've got a newly qualified um, medic then and they've gone into their rotation phase then as long as we got an offer a letter and we've got a start date we will take that from the start they can apply straight away don't have to hang on or wait for that date to come around and for them to kick off and then we've also got your um, maybe second third year rotations again if we get those letters in we can work off those as soon as possible based on maybe a projection basis locums huge amount of work we see more and more doctors um, doing locum work now again six months remittance slips and we'll annualize and average that and we'll take less uh, than six months from a consideration basis. So that can, again, help clients get onto that uh, ladder as quickly as possible and get the affordability they're looking for. If you've got a new managing partner, again, we'll take the a letter from the accountant or managing partner to help and give us an understanding of what their income now is going to be. And we'll take that for affordability purposes. So again, that'll help them get and maximize their affordability. And foreign nationals, we know that's a, a major part in the doctor's occupation. We will take a minimum of 18 months uh, in the UK, with 24 months remaining on a tier one or tier two visa. Andrea, do you want to talk about the dentists? Yeah, thanks, James. So, of course, there's a lot of similarities um, with regards to the doctors and dentists. And of course, it is all about bespoke underwriting. So none of none of these cases, none two cases are the same. Every single case is different and every client situation is different. So, of course, uh, as James alluded to with the doctors, we will look at all validated incomes, employed and self-employed. Um, but one of one of them. Um, a, a quite a common inquiry that we get are from new associate dentists. So they could um, have done their one or two years work within the NHS and decided actually that they want to join um, a, a practice and become in essence self-employed. So moving from an employee position um, to a new self-employed position. So they this um, the, the, these cohort of, of dentists perhaps find it um, a little tricky to um, to, to gain access to, to mortgage funds just simply because they don't have um, any history um, or anything to provide, um, I suppose, a history of self-employed to, to the lender. But what we will do is we will um, take future income. So we will look at, um, at the associate agreement that um, in England and Wales will confirm the UDA, so the units of dentist um, activity. And we absolutely do get that there are variations to this um, in Scotland. Um, and of course, then that includes um, your um, your associate dentist who may have um, less than one year's accounts as well, or it could be that your applicant has changed trading styles, so quickly changed from um, being a, um, a sole trader through to a limited company, but don't have that um, one year limited company accounts as yet, and we can absolutely look at those as well. So James, do you wanna just talk through the legal profession? Yeah, so our final, I suppose, deep dive into these professions are the um, legal professionals. And this will be maybe your solicitors or your barristers. So we really do understand that they will have much more complex income structures with these roles, particularly the barristers. Um, and many of those work on income projections. So that's forecasting, understanding that they've done the work and that they are owed money um, to be repaid in the coming months and years going forward. So age debt forecasts are absolutely something that we've got comfortable with from the chambers or stables in Scotland, and those are acceptable to us. We also understand that some uh, newly qualified um, barristers, for example, would have a pupillage grant, Devlin grant in uh, Scotland, 
And again, that income is acceptable to us along with any work that they're then doing as they migrate into uh, a full-time uh, position in a self-employed basis. New partners in legal firms, again, similar to the GPs who just moved into the partnership. Again, we will accept an accountants and managing partners uh, letter to give us an understanding of their new income. And if someone's uh, gone into an LLP, they bought into it and they've got an equity loan, we will ignore those. So again, that can really help with the affordability. So without working closely with the key firms that we've talked about within the pilot phase, we would have come into this market and not understood these as well as we do now. So you can be confident that we can um, we can take obviously a, a clear footing into that and uh, have an experienced team who understand these different types of incomes. So we'll just give a quick overview of the criteria, um, but it's you know quite self-explanatory from that side of things. Andrea, do you just want to give a quick view of the property and credit? Um, and we'll move on then with Q&A. Yeah, thanks, James. Yeah, so first of all, the properties. So we do offer a fee valuation up to a million pounds purchase price. So if it is over a million pounds, then we will um, approach Connells to provide us with a, a bespoke price. Um, but that's saying we actually um, maximum advance at eighty percent is one point five million and seven hundred and fifty up to ninety percent. Um, but please, if you do have um, a, an application that falls outside with uh, of that, so a little bit higher, please, please pick up the phone and speak to us because it could still be something that we can go outside of of our normal para parameters and look to do for you. And I think I think you know you touched on a point there, Andrea. This is the um, this is the beauty of us being a specialist lender who has an and uh, uh, an understanding of these type of clients, an understanding of the complexities, and a flexible a flexible manual underwriting approach. Because what we can do is we can dig into the detail, we can have a conversation with you, and we can really get to understand what the clients. Uh, needs are and what support you need to uh, going forward. So you'll see there's other general criteria. These have also come out in uh, during our process to develop this product. Capital raising is an obvious one, but no minimum time back for UK returning nationals is another. And also accepting income up to 75 is a really big one and something that obviously we know from our uh, experience in the older borrower market. So number of key areas to remember from this but obviously if you've got any further questions after the session you can get in touch with our bdm team on that so we'll move on to the um final slide here and then we'll go into the q a andrea do you just want to give a little view from this yeah point? absolutely so um i think we we have mentioned as we've gone through we absolutely do have a dedicated bdm support and ring fence underwriters as well but i suppose where it differs um is that you cannot pick up the phone and you can speak to an underwriter and likewise an underwriter will pick up the phone and speak to you so um if um if you're unsure as to whether your case fits um, please just simply get in contact with us. It is very much a two-way conversation here um, with us. And whilst um, absolutely we do have um, criteria, um, we can sometimes for the right application, if we understand your client's story, then absolutely we will go outside of that. So we, it is an online um, portal. We'll encourage you all, if you haven't yet registered with us, please go online and register with us. And it is really, really important as well for us to point out that we do have a, um, a really robust retention service. Um, a little bit different from some of the lenders in that, um, first of all, we will contact um the um that that the that, the, that yourselves to signpost um that your um clients applications are um are coming for up for renewal um and then when we write out to your to your clients first of all we will always always signpost them back to to you guys so i think that's really really important for you to know Fantastic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to our Q&A session now with our distinguished guests. We've got uh, Sarah and Courtney joining us here um, for a Q&A session, really to understand this market from a broker's perspective. So welcome both. Thank you for joining the webinar. Um, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just ask a couple of questions and I'll go to each one of you on both questions. 
and just get a feel really for um, the market itself and some of the key areas which you can really help the audience understand. So you both supported professional clients with their mortgage needs for some time and Sarah with dentists, Courtney with barristers. Um, can you help us understand what challenges you face when placing the case with professionals that you might not face for a non-professional client? And I'll go to you first on that one, Sarah. Yeah, um, so self-employed with less than one year's account. So dentists typically, um, not in all cases, but the majority of dentists will go self-employed in, in September. So their first tax return only actually has seven months uh, earnings on that. So really, they've got to wait for 19 months if they've got an efficient accountant before they've got a full year's trading. So, you know, really, in theory, you're looking at two years of being self-employed before the clients can actually buy property with, with one full year's account. So that, that's that's a real problem. And, and it's really frustrating when you know that they're earning north of 60K per annum minimum and, and you know, they, they can't get a mortgage. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. And, you know, we know that, obviously from dealing with you on this that you know these clients are you know they've got a, a good earning forecast they're going to be increasing their earnings and you know for many lenders like ourselves you know why wouldn't you consider this type of client so yeah a, a, a real niche area and frustration for those clients and how about from the barrister perspective Courtney? Yeah I know I completely agree with what Sarah said really I think it comes down to they know their income so well and it makes so much sense to them that then when they walk into a bank directly and they say, oh, well, you can't borrow anything near what they want, it's just really frustrating. And they work in a world where it's quick, 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 and they want it here and they want it right now and they want to know what's possible. So they have, they're so time poor, they don't have the time to go to 17 different banks to be told no by all of them. So really, I think, especially, especially for my barristers, it's understanding that their income goes like that incredibly quickly. And that I think is, yeah, the, the biggest problem I, I encounter, but not with Hodge, obviously. Yeah, that's good to hear. That is good to hear. And I think, you know, you've got a good point there, really, uh, there, Courtney, around the multiples and around us. Really, we've been able to bring these enhanced multiples into this proposition, knowing that these clients are going to be on a sharp trajectory of income. So in many cases, you know, within maybe two, three years, you're going to be looking probably around about the four times, maybe even lower than that with the number of these professionals. So, yeah, uh, uh, an interesting point to bring out to this um, and let the audience know about. So I suppose from a lender point of view and underwriting, have you seen any changes um, recently that you may not have seen from a, a lender's approach to underwriting these clients when placing the case maybe compared to 12 months ago? Uh, Courtney, I'll ask you that first. Yeah, I think it's it's just become more and more difficult really in my experience. I think the, the lack of ability to speak to a human being at most banks makes, makes it as hard as it could possibly be. Um, a lot of them seem to have pulled back criteria and they'll say that it's because of this in the market and that in the market and the after effects of COVID and, and various different things. But I think the fact that the biggest struggle I see with all of the other banks really is not being able to speak to a person. And I mean, as Andrea mentioned and you mentioned, James, it's actually that one to one interaction in, in five minutes, you can get a case resolved instead of back and forth 25 messages and you get lost quite easy. That's great to hear. And how about from your your perspective, Sarah? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with Courtney. It's it's um, it, a lot of the uh, lenders, you know, the mainstream lenders. It's very much computer decision, and we all know what the computer says. So um, it's it's having lenders that all um, you can actually talk to and give them a story, um, and you know, we're finding more lenders say that they'll do professional uh, mortgages, but actually when it comes down to, right, well, this is my dental case and I start talking the dental jog and they, you know, you can see their eyes glazing over. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. There's proof in the pudding with that, yeah. really, um, and understanding how uh, a lender actually deals with a live case. And you, you as brokers, I suppose, are experienced enough to know that, that once um, uh, once you place a case, that's when you really find out about how a lender is going to be able to react to that. So 
professional markets mortgage is obviously a new to Hodge, and you both work closely with us since the loss of the professional. Um, what have we done differently um, when you, you know considering your inquiry, and what really stands out when dealing with Hodge? And that's to Courtney first again. Sorry. Sure. Um, I think that it's trust. It all comes down to trust for me, really. I think that I, I know that if I have a conversation with you, James, or if I have a conversation with Ellie, so barring a credit score or evaluation, it will it will happen. I have I have an immense amount of trust in in what in what you, what you guys tell me, and and I don't want to. Uh, Ellie's not on camera, so I can maybe make her blush a bit here. Uh, but it's when I have it when I have a chat. It's, back and forth even if it's maybe not initially what I wanted it's finding a way to have it done anyway it isn't I'm just going to send you an email palm back the case to you it's a no we haven't tried to make it work that's never what I've had with Hodge I've had a we're going to work together to try and find a way to make it work oh, that's great to hear and how about yourself Sarah yeah that, that is very much similar uh, uh, sort of uh, experience that I've had with Hodge you know you understand uh, me you know i will always send you an email with my case uh if it if it's uh, sort of a bit tricky give the story and uh you know if you say yes which you know i i not really had one that uh, you say no on but you submit it and then once you submit it it's absolutely plain sailing you understand everything um you know, you, you've uh, well, Brad is my BDM. He's spoken to Ali or or whoever, and and it, it just goes through. Yeah, it's fantastic to hear that, and I think that's what we're all about. You know, we know we know from a point of view of our service-led proposition that we need to stand up to that and make sure that we're consistent with that and um, something we pride ourselves on. And certainly in the past and in, in our DNA really within Hodge, it is about, okay, if we can't get you or help you support you with exactly what you're looking for, what can we do for your client? Because there's been in many cases with the professionals, what we have learned in dealing with yourselves and others is that um, it's possible that things can happen or can be made to happen. Maybe if they haven't got quite the um, borrowing capacity, we can maybe find more deposit or we can flex on the term or whatever it might be in supporting you to go back to your clients with a solution. So I think just finally, because uh, we're going to move on with uh, Ellie's and the underwrite side of things for, uh, after this, um, can you just give an example of a case you placed with Hodge, which was probably out of the ordinary with the, but shows the flexibility and the common sense approach that we've taken. And I'll go to you first, Sarah. Yeah, okay. So I had a dentist that's uh, been less trading less than six months, um, which they were an NHS dentist. So we were working on their units of dental activity um, uh, calculation, and you lent five times that income by, you know, annualising the... The income um and you did five times at 90 percent so you know just can't get anything near that on the anywhere else in the market fantastic and yourself courtney yeah i mean i i've, I've got one that you'll probably remember that was complicated from beginning to end um it was uh so one of my barristers i needed i needed the six times income i needed it last year's accounts and it was a sharp trajectory in in, 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 the, in the most purest sense, in the sense I think I was going from an income of about 20K to about 100K. So it was really sharp, uh, but, but Ellie got her head around it, obviously, and we managed to get the client the loan that she wanted. But not only that, there was, there was a problem where she lost the property she was looking at to buy because the vendors just decided not to sell at the last minute. And this was, she'd secured a very, very nice rate uh, before all the craziness in September and she found a new property and we had a real rush to complete based on the offer and I needed three days on top of the offer to be extended and it wasn't something that you need, usually would do but it's something you did do on the basis that I only needed three days and I would never have a bank do that for me usually and again it shows kind of the, the trust and how much the, the relationship that we built here in the sense that you were willing to do that because she was she was heartbroken this woman on the phone to me when she thought she might not get it done and I think that really does show the type of bank that our job that's fantastic um so great to hear so a couple of case studies there some real life scenarios where we've been able to I suppose 
going above beyond. We're going to have to move on very quickly to Ellie's part. But just one last question to both of you, really. On, you know, as a broker uh, who deals with professional clients on a day-to-day -day basis, what's the best advice um, you can give to someone who's targeting a certain professional occupation? And Sarah, I'll go to you quickly on that. Yeah, um, I think it's really understanding that profession. Um, if they're self-employed, it's understanding accounts. Um, I think that's the, probably the biggest area that uh, a lot of brokers really suffer with um, is their knowledge on accounts. They just go by the tax calculations, tax year overviews, and they avoid accounts. So I would say, you know, understand accounts. Uh, be patient. You know, you're, you're not going to be the best person in that marketplace, um, you know, in, in a year. You, you know, I've been working with dentists for 19 years and, uh, and, you know, I'm still, I'm still learning, still, still growing. Um, and I don't know everything. Um, and I never will, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing that I really find, uh, has really built my sort of referrals is, uh, getting referrals from accountancy connections. So I deal with a lot of accountants that uh, specialise in dentists. And so it's it's just finding those networks that dentists use. Uh, you know, social media is probably one thing that, you know, I'm still learning, being as I'm a bit of an older one. <laughs> uh, but, you know, social media works as well. Fantastic. Any, any nuggets from you, Courtney, before we move on? Uh, no, I mean, pretty much the same as what Sarah said, but I think it's just really important to know Know, know your market in, in every sense it, it may seem incredibly boring to read what happened what the newest tax laws are but it's important and reading any changes in accounting what hmrc are changing it's important and also for a market you want to focus on knowing, knowing what's happening to them in their market as so specializing barristers i was reading what was happening with the crime review i wanted to keep up to date so that then my clients knew that i knew i knew their struggle and knowing their struggle is, is important Fantastic. Thank you so much for all your insight uh, and expertise uh, in today's webinar. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move on to Andrea and to Ellie to give you a view from an underwriter's point of view. Over to you. Thanks very much indeed. That was really, really useful and really, really good to actually see and hear from a broker's point of view. Um, so Ellie, thank goodness you're back on because we actually did lose you for a little bit there. I was a bit concerned. As was I, I'm now out of breath. My internet oh my dropped. Gosh. What oh. are the chances? Yeah, I know, blimey. Okay, uh, right. Okay, so back in the room. Um, so I think really what I really want um, us to all understand, um, we've heard from, from, from Courtney and Sarah, but what are the regular types of queries that you get from brokers looking to place their professional mortgage applications? So I suppose really want to hear about um, the, the nitty gritty and how, how you've helped. Yeah, sure. I suppose that the most common query we have is around complex income. However, not one query is the same as the other. And we have inquiries ranging from newly qualified professionals whose income is due to increase and established professionals who have changed from PAYE to self-employed or they've changed their trading status. And sometimes the applicant circumstances or the income evidence that they have, um, it might not completely fit our criteria. And although we're, of course, a responsible lender and we've got a criteria to adhere to, we really do pride ourselves on being flexible, applying common sense and treating each application on its own merits. And the underwriting is very bespoke and we'll always pick up the phone and understand the full picture with the broker and aim to find a solution. And I suppose another common query is affordability. And I think the main thing here is that as a business, we've done a considerable amount of research around the career path of these professionals and we do understand that especially for newly qualified ones their income is only going to go in an upward direction and we therefore do apply a common sense approach and for all applications applications sorry and for the likes of barristers associate dentists junior doctors we do consider increased income that they're shortly due to receive and projected income 
Yeah, that's really interesting. As you say, Ali, it is all about um, making sure that we understand these individual professionals, because um, as, as Sarah and Courtney did did allude to, um, it's all very well. Alenda saying absolutely, they have got a professionals market, um, but what we need to make sure that that we do is absolutely understand them. So, can you give me an example where you've had to look at an inquiry a little bit differently um, than you would? from, I suppose, our, our normal criteria to support the application? Yeah, of course. And I suppose um, one that really stands out for me is um, we were approached by a broker who um, his client was a, a GP and she worked in a practice. However, the partnership was uh, dissolved within the last 12 months and she'd started doing locum work. Um, we require six months remittance slips for locums, as you've already touched upon. However, the applicant didn't yet have six months written slips, so this didn't fit our criteria. Um, and although the applicant had gone from being a partner in a practice to being a locum, the applicant, we knew that the applicant, had, you know, she had a lot of experience in this industry, many, many years she's worked there. And we were therefore comfortable with that application without the six months written remittance slips as we had that reassurance. And I think that's a great example of us showing how flexible we can be. Yeah, absolutely. And it is about that flexibility, but understanding, I suppose, the, um, the, the applicant circumstances. But one thing that um, that really is is topical is affordability, isn't it? Um, um, you know, we, we've spoken about that all the way through. Um, so this is really um, an area that we do stand out. So can you help the audience understand how our affordability approach is a little bit different? Yeah, of course. And that, that that really is a good question. And I think the difference here at Hodge is that we have a lot of experience in the later life space. And due to how detailed and manual the affordability assessment of later life is, um, it that's naturally carried through into professionals. And this is a huge positive as we as underwriters are able to see exactly where a case is failing down affordability wise as our calculator is very very complex and it's a great tool like for example our affordability calculator doesn't just give us a maximum amount a customer can have it really breaks it down and it shows disposable income on a month by month basis so that that enables us really to look at the case like a human being and apply common sense and it's a great tool as i said because if you've got a case that's failing affordability yeah, there may be an example where a case is failing by if you break it down, it's only £50 a month. And we know that, you know, the applicant's income is only going to go in an upward direction. And we might have some some evidence of that in, in the future. And that will really allow us to, you know, think outside of the box. And then we'll able to help many more customers. Yeah, thanks, Ali. And it is that um, thinking outside the box that can make that that difference. So the time is running um, short, but just one quick, quick um, last question, mm -hmm. um, if you can. Can you just um, explain what evidence would be suitable to support an application, particularly where the income is non-standard or more, more complex? Yeah, sure. Well, supporting evidence and income evidence is fairly standard, to be honest. But when it comes to non-standards, and as we've mentioned before, if we need um, a reference from practice principal at a dentist to verify dental associates income, or we need a projection from the chambers to help a newly qualified barrister, we have template letters for all of these, which is great because we can provide that to the broker, the broker can provide it to the client and so on. And as we need the letters to confirm certain things, the template letters enable us to just get it right first time. There's no back and forth wondering, you know, oh, that it didn't say that or anything mm -hmm. like that. We really do get it right first time, a much quicker journey, a much more streamlined for all parties involved. That's great. Thanks, Ellie. Um, so hopefully that's given you a really good insight um, as to, number one, how we work really closely with our brokers and number two, how our um, educated, great fab brokers like Ellie can really make a difference to your clients. James. Fantastic. Thank you both. Um, and yeah, thank you to everybody really who's uh, not only attended, but also uh, our, our guests who've been able to help with some real 
in your interest in intricate knowledge into these key markets um these are um i suppose very bespoke type customers these are customers who can have really uh, complex needs and i think the value of understanding how to place these cases how much support you're going to get from hodge uh, as a lender within this space and what you need to do to really understand those customers is invaluable feedback and uh, and knowledge that is uh, has been passed across today so thank you so much for that we've had a couple of um questions from the audience which uh, i'll just run through so multiples um what multiples would you consider on a joint application if one client um, if only one of the clients is a professional. I think you picked this up in the presentation piece, Andrea, but just to clarify to everyone, the six times income, uh, loan to income at 80% is applicable to a joint application where only one applicant has to be a professional. And that's the same and applies to the same at five times loan to income at 90% as well. So that obviously can make a huge difference when you're looking to um, maximize your affordability for your clients. And um, another question we had, which was how would you treat a professional client that stepped away from working for a period mm. to study and then there's recently returned to a professional role with a higher earning potential? Um, it's actually a really interesting question. This is where I suppose a lender like ourselves comes in from a flexibility point of view. Um, I don't know whether Ellie is still um, on the webinar at all and uh, can come in to join us on that one. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ellie, I think this is something where, this is where we come into our own from a point of view of a lender and where we can really sort of get close to the situation. Do you wanna just give a little bit of feedback on that scenario? Yeah, certainly. And it, it, it really depends on what, what profession they're in and you know, how, how much experience they've had before, how long they've been away, what they've come back into, what are they actually doing? And I suppose, you know, that is the beauty of the, the product. It's very bespoke. No one's got the same scenario. And really, we'd need to pick up the phone and, and have a chat with you and find out what income evidence you do have. But certainly something we can consider. We just need to, you know, find out what we can get and how we can verify it and how we can then help. Fantastic. So if um, I could just finish up with thanking everyone who's attended the session today, uh, Courtney and Sarah, if you are still there um, on the webinar, then thank you so much for your input and your support. Um, like I said, invaluable to all the audience today and yourself, Ellie, uh, from an underwrite point of view. Uh, it just leaves me to say thank you so much. Have a great um, day and week. And if you do want a copy of the recording, we will be posting this onto our website uh, for reference. And if you've got any questions for ourselves or the team going forward, we're here to help and look forward to dealing with you uh, in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.